Hello everyone, this is George and today I'm going to be talking about managing folks in our new um, virtual environments. So uh, a lot of people I've heard are having difficulty managing people that aren't in the same office with them. They've gone from having a team of people, um, you know, where you could walk over to people's office and now you have people working at home, sometimes maybe because of the kids, they're working odd shifts or off shifts. And so how do you manage this? Well, I'm going to be doing this in two parts. Today, I'm going to be going over how I have managed people in the past. And I'm going to be uh, going over a system I used using a spreadsheet, uh, which you can use in person. Now, the nice thing about this is it's going over the basics uh, of what I call a WIP process, a work in progress uh, sheet. And I'm going to be emphasizing um, how I have used it, but I have used this using a whiteboard in my office so that at any time uh, I could have a casual meeting with people and say, hey, come on over. I want to kind of go over status and see where everybody's at. And then we're looking at a board with people's names on it. And it looks just like this. Uh, the reason I want to go over this one first is because um, the issue with managing people remotely um, is, is different. But if you're not managing people in a pretty precise way before they went virtual, then the virtual environment makes things worse. So uh, I want to get, um, you know, establish a foundation and then we'll build upon that uh, with another tool that we use to manage people, um, you know, in our environment. We've been working virtually. I mean, I've been running my business for seven plus years um, virtually. And so this is something that I've just had to uh, come up with over the years. So let me share my screen here uh, and show this to you. So this is, um, it's just a Google Doc. You can use a spreadsheet for it. The nice thing about a Google Doc is uh, everybody can be using the same link and, and get to this file. And you can have it set up so that people are updating this at their discretion. Um, I have run this where I'm the only one that can update it depending upon the size of the team. Uh, and that way I can keep better track of things and you don't have people shifting dates around uh, either to cause confusion or either to cover their tracks. Uh, so having the manager or the supervisor be the one that, um, that does this is, is maybe a good idea. So, um, you know, I call it the whip meeting, the whip sheet, whatever, but it's short for work in progress. I always keep up here the date when it was last updated. Uh, that's just kind of smart so that everybody knows when the latest data was put on here. Now, I set up two columns for the title task. Uh, it enables me to easily create categories uh, because you might have three or four projects running in parallel, and that way all the tasks related to one project can be grouped together or one set of tasks that logically go together go in one place. And by uh, setting up an A and then a B column, you know, it's just easy to organize them this way. Uh, the second column I have is who's working on it or who's responsible for it. Uh, I'm just using some bogus names in here. And then I have three columns. Uh, the first one is the original date when the uh, task was set to be completed. And I distinguish that from the current target date, mainly so that I can tell the difference between something that was projected to be on a certain date and then delayed. Uh, or like in the case right here, you have Jill, she was supposed to get this done on the 10th, then she reprojected it to be done on the 17th, and then got it done on the 22nd. This would be very different. Um, not very different, but it tells a different story than if this had been 7.10 and then it got done on 7.6. Because if, if I didn't have this middle column, I could change the state to 7.17 and say, oh, hey, I was only a couple of days late. Well, you were two weeks late because I'm keeping track of what the original target date was. Um, so I like to track things on a weekly basis. Um, it just gives you a good, you know, good thing as opposed to this is going to be due on Monday, and this is going to be due on Wednesday, and this is good on Thursday. I prefer to look at things a week at a time, unless there's some task that just has to be done more quickly for you know some sort of urgency that you have either with a client deliverable or something else. So, um, if you look, you know, here's my calendar. Today is the 29th. Uh, I'm using Friday dates on purpose. So. 
Uh, this is something that'll be due on the 24th. This will be due on the 7th. Uh, this one here, what it means is Fred was gonna get task one done on the 24th, something happened. Uh, it's been reprojected on the 7th. And so the actual done date, and I could have said actual completion date, but it just makes the column longer and I don't see any value in it. Now, what I, what I typically have in here is a lot of data in here, a lot of explanations, notes, things that enable me to look at it at a glance and remind myself what was going on. If you've only got, you know, like maybe 10 tasks or, you know, seven tasks like I have here, uh, you're not going to forget it. But if this gets to be 20, 30, 40, 50 lines, this could get overwhelming. And then just reminding yourself where were we on that might be difficult. Uh, it also gets the information out of the supervisor's head uh, and it makes it available to everybody who has visibility to this so that you don't have to go, oh, George, he's not available. Oh, what's going on with this task number four? Well, I can always go into here and say, oh, look, um, this was, you know, whatever the status happens to be, or you can put in there things like dependencies, um, where, like, for example, this one here was delayed. You could have put in here, it's like, hey, we're delayed a week because we have a dependency on an outside group until that group does their job we can't finish our job. So that's a nice explanation for why Jill was late on this task, um, you, you know, whatever else. So in here, you have a history of what happened. You can have a history of what's been updated, what status has been provided by the person in charge or other factors so that at any point, the WIP is telling you what's going on with all the work in the environment. Now, if you've got a team, and they all report to you. This is really effective because you do this. What I used to do is I used to update this um, on Monday mornings with Friday dates uh, at the time we weren't working weekends. And then we would start our week going over this list. People would give us their updates. If there were delays, if there were dependencies that weren't being met, they all reported it. And it, it, it also put a little bit of competition to work because you know, if, if we're all looking at Barney and Barney's always late or Jill is always late, you know, you can tell who's the slacker. Uh, it also enables people to say, hey, Fred, uh, you're falling behind. I've got some bandwidth in my, um, you know, my schedule. Maybe I can lend a hand or maybe there's some specific expertise that's required and someone on the team can come up and say, oh, hey, I think we can rely on this person to help out here. And so as a, a way to run a meeting, it can be very effective because all the people on the team can be looking at the sheet, they can be comparing uh, each other's progress. And like I mentioned earlier, if you do have a slacker, someone who's goofing off, someone who's maybe uh, a junior member of the team, they can join forces to either help them or point out to the supervisor, hey, we got a problem here, and they can come together to, to work out a solution. So this is part one of um, you know, a two-part series. In the next series, I'm gonna uh, go over uh, the tool Asana that we use as a team uh, to run things. It is um, you know, accessible from anywhere in the world. It's something that you log into, and the nice thing about it is it's 100% free. So um, stay tuned for part two of this.